In older Survivor seasons, Exile Island was a place one contestant was sent to go with the impression that they would be toughing it out by themselves. In this video we'll be covering the most bizarre journeys, such as contestants who were sent to exile so often they had it named after them, to uh, whatever coach was doing. One of these contestants that became very well acquainted with Exile was Candice from the Cook Islands. This was just after season 12 where Exile played a massive part. Therefore, as a result, production brought back the twist and used it on several occasions throughout the season in a variety of ways. Firstly, Penner and then Yule visited the island, which was followed by a tribe swap occurring. After the immunity challenge as new tribes, Jeff then revealed a note. And note style twists on the Cook Islands are uh, not considered the greatest among the community. But this was actually not a controversial twist, shock horror, and rather the winners, the Rarotonga tribe, could pick someone to go to exile, but they were safe from the upcoming tribal council. Candace was picked, and this marked the first time she had to go to Exile Island, but this was her allies on the other tribe trying to keep her safe rather than harm her, so quite rightfully, Candace was thankful that the other tribe picked her. So thankful in fact, that when the opportunity came to mutiny to the other tribe, she almost instantly took it. I mean, Penner did as well, but psh, it's Penner. While well, Candace felt she was now on a better tribe, this began her hilarious downfall. With reward, the winning tribe could also send one contestant to exile, and guess who I2 picked. If Jeff mentioned the I24 had the ability to make someone on the other tribe suffer, before he could even finish his sentence, every single time, they nominated Candace. Because the I24 went on a crazy winning streak, this marked Exile Visit 2 and 3, with the editors humorously showing Candace suffering on Exile, juxtaposing the I2 tribe enjoying rewards. Exile Island is typically associated with being a pre-merge exclusive twist, but oh no, it popped up again as an advantage in the auction. Yule and Becky pooled their money, bought the advantage, and this gave them the opportunity to send someone to Exile Island and take their money. And guess who they picked? Put another one on the board because this was Candace's fourth Exile visit, and any hope she had of finding the idol was extinguished by Yule, who revealed he already found it. Some more salt in the wound comes from this being Candace's boot episode, but at least she left the game doing what she loved. Eating sea cucumbers. From the oldest appearance on this list to the latest, we're going to Game Changers. Excel had been around for a while at this point, and Survivor had been known to experiment with the island format. Although nothing was as brave as them literally lying about the island part and putting Debbie on a yacht. If that wasn't bad enough, Debbie got to enjoy an entire banquet, only for then John Cochran to randomly spawn out of nowhere to mentor her. I would be more shocked about it, but at this stage this Exile Island experience is essentially Jess' fever dream. It's a safe assumption both Boston, Rob and Parvati are probably the captains of the ship. Cochran then arrives and makes Debbie pick between the three starter advantages, like he's the Professor Oak of Survivor Game Changers. Debbie has the option of the fake idol kit, an extra vote, and a challenge advantage for her tribe, to which she picks the extra vote, which I feel is the right call. And just like Debbie who picked the extra vote, you can pick to subscribe to me if you enjoy this style of content. What makes this Exile experience so bizarre is that it is completely different to anything we saw up to that point, and perhaps ever will. Contestants usually have a bad time while being forced to survive on a remote island for a night. Instead, Debbie essentially hits the jackpot. That being said, I feel this twist perfectly sums up game changers. The more questionable casting picks get the big moments, the big names are there for about a day, and a crazy amount of advantages are just shoved down the contestants' throats. On the topic of advantages, while this exile moment somewhat spilled over into the actual game, it was too iconic not to add. After he was done repeatedly sending Candace to exile, Ozzy himself got to experience the island on fans versus favourites, and oh boy did he make history. After the favourites won the reward challenge, both Ozzy and Kathy visited exile with it quickly becoming Kathy just sitting there while Ozzy would pretend to get food. In reality, Ozzy was searching for the idol. Honestly, it was pretty cool watching him jumping, diving and darting across the island and covering clue after clue until he found the eventual advantage. But Ozzy wasn't done there. Inspired by Yoiman and Fiji, Ozzy grabbed a piece of wood and then hit it with some cloth 
to disguise it as an idol. A few days later, Chet and Jason were sent to Exile Beach, where Jason found clue after clue. Lo and behold, he found Ozzy's fake immunity idol. From a viewer perspective, it's honestly pretty funny seeing a naive fan of the show, ecstatic about finding an idol, only to realise it literally has no power. Not to mention that no Survivor season is going to make something look this cheap. <laughs> okay, maybe Survivor 41. Nevertheless, we need to skip a few rounds until the merge, where Eliza and Jason find themselves on the clear bottom. Jason's fine because he won individual immunity, but what about Eliza? Jason produces his tiny twig carcass from exile, and this causes one of the most memorable quotes in the history of Survivor. It's not the idol. Yes, yes. Ozzy must have put it in there. He must have the real thing. That's not the idol. What is it? Honestly, I do feel bad for Jason, but you can't deny this is one of the most hilarious sequences on Survivor to be birthed from Exile Island. If you thought Candace visiting Exile four times in one season was bad at number two, we're actually going to talk about Sugar, who literally set a record for Exile Island visits. In fact, it was so bad in Gabon that Exile began a getting called the Sugar Shack just because how often she was sent. It all started in episode 2 where Sugar was selected by the Fong tribe to be exiled. Despite Sugar not feeling as though she was super prepared for survival, she crushed the idol search and managed to find the hidden immunity idol on her first day. In the next episode, the tribe swap happened, where contestants had to pick each other in a schoolyard pick to create two tribes of seven. Only one problem. There were 15 contestants, and that meant the last person picked, Sugar, had to go to the island again. Because Sugar had the idol, as well as the fact this was old school Survivor, where there weren't 10 different idols, Sugar had no reason to pick the clue option. Like, ever. So for Exile Visit 2, she enjoyed life with her own hut, hammock, and fruit board. In the following challenge, Coda won, and could select someone to send to Exile Island. After much deliberation, they decided to switch things up this time, and send GC. <laughs> Who am I kidding? They sent Sugar again. Add another one to the counter, because this was Visit 3, and Sugar made a beeline right towards the Sugar Shack, once again, for some more fruit. What's that? The Coda tribe won another reward challenge? See ya, Sugar. In fact, Visit 4 is where Sugar was getting upset. Not because she was sent to exile again, but because literally no one else but her was sent to exile. Unknown to the other contestants, Sugar was eating extremely well compared to the rest of the Fong tribe back at camp that had only a little bit of rice left. I mean, you know your exile experience is crazy when you're upset that you're getting too pampered. Another reward challenge win for Coda? Honestly, Sugar might as well set her postcode to the middle of Gabon at this stage. Sugar visits Exile five times, and if Sugar's maths is correct, she was sent to Exile for nine entire days, which is absurd. As one of my commenters note, Sugar went to Exile five times, and after she found an idol, she just had comfort and food the whole time when she went again. While Sugar was certainly a unique personality on Exile, I don't think the producers quite expected the insanity of Coach. Of course, he's here at number one. We have Coach. Exile Island was again a big part of Token Sheens, and because this was the end game, many of the contestants had already visited the island. As a result, JT felt bad if he had to send the likes of Aaron again, and so the conversation steered towards a reluctant coach. Steven in Confessional says he doesn't know if coach can make fire or cook food, and Aaron at the challenge essentially calls what he's going to do. Not drink water, act like he was suffering, and use it as an excuse for when he loses a challenge. On Exile, we are treated to coach medicine meditating, doing tai chi, and this all happens while the editors play overly heroic music in the background simply to mock him. In a quarantine questionnaire, Coach reveals more bizarre things that didn't make the show. For example, the producers told contestants when arriving at Exile they had to stay within a very specific radius of the producer site, as outside it there were deadly beasts like big cats. To which Coach immediately travels outside the radius, to follow the cat prints of a deadly big cat. On the first night, he also recycled ashes from other contestants' fires, only to combine it with his own urine to make a circle that surrounded where he slept. I know it's a technique used in the wild to mark territory, but honestly at this stage I have more questions than answers. Even after his exile journey, Coach is retelling all of the experiences to his fellow competitors, 
that clearly don't care. Nevertheless, Coach's over-the-top demeanor really sells his exile journey and secures it in the top spot. If you enjoyed this video, don't leave me wasting away. Like and subscribe to become a rogue on the channel today. This video on your screen is one you could have featured on and talks about dream survivor twists submitted by very viewers of this channel. If that sounds like a good video for you, then check it out. But anyway, have a great day. Um, peace.